Hello, hello there, and welcome back to Gaichin Thunder. Today, I'm in the Hyuga again, and this is just still one of the best battleships in the game. Monstrous 14-inch guns, 12 of them, and with some of the most potent SAP shells in the game. And I just nuked my first victim, which was an enemy Yuga, behind an island uh, after seven minutes into the game. And you can see at short range, those guns truly take no prisoners. Together with the very potent secondaries with also sap shells, I try to force my way into B and it doesn't look good. The enemy has all three caps. And the reason for that are obviously patrol boats. Now, at the start, I was not quite sure what to talk about, but there are basically a few topics that really are playing a key role currently in naval forces. So, first of all, a lot of actual player accounts seem to be bots. They behave like bots, they have a really awkward gun control, and they behave to a certain degree like the AI bots that we previously had in the games. And that is not really challenging because it's, you know, already pretty difficult to distinguish um, team bots from players, but then also to distinguish players that are actively playing their ship from bots and also then from player accounts with apparently a bot program. And I absolutely hate this. At least that is what it looks like to me. They're driving in, their turrets are just uh, in different firing groups arranged, which I cannot do, and they're really not playing in any way, shape or form smart. So this has been the degradation of the player base. And it's also very interesting to see most of them being either the Helenas or the, or the uh, Russian light cruiser, Zelensnyakov, I think it's called. So that is pretty worrying. And at lower battle ratings, everybody plays their Moffat. Now, that's actually smart because the civil line modifiers are so high that even for basically doing nothing, you get a all right amount of civil lines with a bot program. And I guess this is what people are really after, right? Uh, just uh, letting the AI bot program do the work. But that is really something that I absolutely hate to see. The second thing is, we are here in the Creme de la Creme, one of the best battleships in the game. And yet, if not by sheer luck, I would be completely irrelevant to the game. It doesn't really matter how much I kill. It doesn't really matter how straight I'm driving towards the cap. It basically is already half down our tickets before I come even close to the cap. And only because one of our hero PT boats went and decapped C, I now have a realistic chance by flipping the B cap to at least stop the ticket bleed. And then I only can hope that my team works together with me and it just whittles down the targets uh, in front of me that are threatening me. My greatest fear is obviously that a cruiser like this is just spewing its long lances into the cap and then um, I'd be lucky to even go behind the island or I just eat them and die. Uh, then the best thing I could do is hope to decap this. Now, Napalm, if PT boats are just so close to the caps and the cap just so good, why don't you jump now in a PT boat yourself? Well, basically I have 60,000 civil line repair costs. I repeat, 60. I bail out and despite not being actively destroyed by an enemy, I still have to pay the full repair bills. And I kid you not, it's more profitable to lose the game but survive than to bail out and try to win. That is not great game design. Okay, <laughs> so there it is. And the third topic is sap shells. Um, a lot of nations do not have the very best potent sap shells for battleships or uh, their cruisers. 
and that includes all the US ships and that also includes some of the German ships and later or uh, lower down the lines at lower battle ratings a lot of destroyers also have a bit of a problem because they don't have actual AP um, or not even SAP look at the entire original Japanese um, destroyer line none of them have uh, SAP or AP maybe a few exceptions most of them being of American uh, Fletcher class design origin um, but so this this leads to something that is not really all that enjoyable so the gameplay is not really optimized uh, the aiming system is absolutely horrible there are desynchronizations um this is the least optimized overall game mode and still i prefer this to the mess that is high tier tanks and also the mess that is um, high tier RRB. Um, you have to see it like this. I want to enjoy the game. I'm coming home after a long day of hard work and I just want to have a good time. That's basically the intention of gonna heat PC. And at some point I really have to give this game a crack with the whips. Um, honestly, War Thunder has one big problem for me that really deletes a lot of enjoyment and that is that it's really driven forward this fear of missing out or just that you miss out a day of grinding and then you are lacking behind you always have to be in the latest flavor of the month ship plane tank helicopter you name it doesn't really matter because eventually it will get nerfed and you again have the fear of missing out the epic times um, for example, here in the background, the ship on the, the ship on the left, the awesome Fonderton. It was just one of the most glorious examples, and the only reason why the Fonderton was relevant at all was because AP shells did significantly more damage uh, back in the days. The aiming system, while already being wonky, was better, and the Hugo, the ship that I'm currently playing, well, the APs didn't really fuse it didn't have the sap shells but only quote unquote only he shells which did enough damage and uh, gaijin flipped the upper and the lower belt around so it was uh, easy to amorac the ship even with 11 inch ap and i thoroughly enjoyed those times also because the thunderton was one of the most tanky ships ever it's unbelievable and to go in and really have to brawl I enjoyed this the Hugo on the other hand is um, not great when it comes to having active fun in of itself it's relaxing you know you just sit back snipe once in a while ammo rack something feel great for a time uh, try to uh, hope to not become a victim of a P8 or a revenge torpedo bomber uh, whatever or a patrol boat sneaking up on you that was previously not rendering because of certain mechanics that I don't have time here to explain fully but all in all despite this game mode having so many flaws you can have your fair share of fun and it's for all the wrong reasons because this is not a very competitive game mode this is not a game mode where the hard uh, the the try hard sweaties try to make their stamp on the game mode this is for um yeah people that just lo uh, love it a bit more relaxing the gameplay the pace is completely different oh boy i'm dead am i skip bombs really well that was interesting anyway um yeah the the, the pace is very different and to be honest if i think about it the playstyle of tanks doesn't really change all that often now yeah fondaton just like in the old days um you know you still try to really gain energy advantage um try to stick together with your team um ground pounders well if you survive long enough you can make a huge impact on the game depending on the map 
and uh, it really only changes with uh, AI, uh, IR missiles and with radar. And with tanks, it's also the same. Who shoots first usually wins. Now, there are various different time, time areas um, where the technology is vastly different. We have the tin boxes of the pre-World War II era or early World War II era. Then we have the steel monsters with the end of World War II, beginning of the Cold War era, especially the German and the Soviets. And we have a lot of heat mixed in because reasons. And at the end of the day, um, it really changes then with stabilizers, laser range finders, thermal imaging, and APFSDS. Mm, but the overall playstyle stays the same. Now with ships, so far we do not really have all that many rocket or missile systems in the game uh, that are not that relevant to say that. Um, so it's all about guns and torpedoes. And to be honest, it's difficult to make torpedoes really reliably work in this game. And uh, guns are also kind of destroyed with a huge amount of RNG. There is the laser, uh, there is the range finder, which you have to upgrade, and still it gives you very often the wrong leading. And then there is very often comically bad dispersion. And uh, at the the bigger the caliber, the more it is. And then with three inch auto cannons, you have a comically good pinpoint accurate. Um, accuracy. So it's really after all those years still riddled with issues and bugs and still there is something about it that I just have to applaud to Gaijin in certain aspects. For example the 3D models, the Ultra HD client in general. It looks fantastic. The water, fantastic. Gaijin still has to really work hard on the bow waves uh, and those uh, splash effects, but um, I think the basis is right there. The next thing is that I love the interaction between aircraft and ships. The problem is it's completely unfinished because AA is broken for years. And um, that brings me from applauding them for certain aspects, including the scale, the range, the size of the maps, but they then make maps where Three covered islands affect naval combat more than the actual objectives, at least for big ships, because it's the small ships that decide the outcome of the battle. If I'd still be there in the Huga, well, damn, bro, <laughs> big problem. So here I am, um, and just waiting, 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 right? And overall, this is also a big of a bit of a problem for me as a YouTuber because I really like to play ships, but I cannot stand the direction where the warships has gone. And uh, the only other alternative is War Thunder. And War Thunder has a lot of ships and unique mechanics that are not to be really found somewhere else. We really have to appreciate that. But for me as a YouTuber, there is not really the viewer base for naval content in general, except it's just some very new spicy big battleship um, or another very famous ship or just, you know, uh, earning a million civil lines with the Moffat game style. But even then, you know, you can't guarantee it. And that is a big of an issue because I can play this game mode uh, more than tanks and planes. Um, but to make videos about it is incredibly stale and it's also very frustrating if you're in a battleship, you fire a full servo, the lead is correct, the range is set correctly, but the initial range that you got was wrong and you miss and if it's in the USS Arizona, it, that means like hitting the target not for two minutes and that's just waiting for an unnecessary amount of time. Now if you're still uh, with me here, then congratulations, you earned yourself a virtual cookie. Here, congratulations. Now let's have a look at the results. So roughly 130,000 
Civil Lions with a bit of luck in the lottery another 25,000 and 18,000 RP unlocking the Congo finally and uh, yeah half of my profit goes down the drain with a win and a premium account by the stupid 62,000 Civil Lion repair cost. Hugo it's both deeply frustrating and boring but also also satisfying if it works and that is the best battleship so you know really take your time figuring out what you really want in naval forces um you know if you have a moffat the game is broken so why not abuse it to earn all the civil lines that's it for me today thanks for watching thanks for listening i hope you enjoyed this video please give it a like give it a subscribe if you want to see more let me know in the comment section what you think about this whole topic how battleships feel how the game modes feel at higher tiers was it worth the grind and as usual share this uh, video with your friends your clanmates and who else you can annoy with this link and as usual we will see each other on the battlefields, in the skies, and on the waves of War Thunder.